Hello and welcome to my floss tube. My name is Carmen. Uh, this is going to be a video about cross stitch and knitting because I started knitting a couple of months ago and I have a bunch of knitted projects to show you. <laughs> and this is actually my first proper floss tube since December. I have posted a couple of videos in between. My most recent one was my 2023 finish parade, but I haven't actually made like a regular floss tube since, you know, three months ago almost. So uh, I'll get into a little bit as to why that happened as I go along. I don't want to bore you too much right, right in the very beginning. Uh, but I do want to mention right in the beginning that I am going to put chapters on this video. So if you want to skip to the knitting, or you know any other part of the video, um, you can go ahead and do that. It's totally fine if you don't watch the whole thing. I know I, I skip around in floss tubes all the time, so if I do it, you're allowed to do it too. <laughs> also, I'm wearing my glasses today. Thoughts? I think it might be a little bit annoying with the glare because I have a light here, but anyways, I didn't feel like putting my contacts in, so this is what you're getting. Sorry. <laughs> so in this video, I have two finished cross stitch pieces to show you. One of them is a start and a finish. And I will, once I get to the knitting stuff, I will have eight pairs of socks to show you as well as a ninth one, a ninth pair that I have started. So a lot to show you. I have been a busy little bee in the last few months. Um, and with all that said, let's get into the fun stitchy stuff. So the first thing I'm going to show you is something that you will have seen if you watched my most recent video, which was my 2023 finish parade. But just so that I know that I've made a very thorough record of everything that I have stitched, <laughs> here it is. And I won't talk about this for too long because I don't want to be too repetitive. But this is actually it was just released. So it finally has a name. And the name is Gathering the Last Fruit and it's a pattern by Modern Folk Embroidery. This was the 2023 Holiday Countdown Stitch Along that was done in collaboration with Evertote and Roxy Floss. I only got the pattern, so I didn't get the 25 flosses, but I did stitch along with everybody. And I made my own conversion using all Roxy Floss supplies. So the linen that I used is 40 count Snickerdoodle and the three the three floss colors I chose, um, the red is called Tart, the green is Sage, and then the off-white, uh, which is really tone-on-tone, tone, uh, is called Old Lace, and it created a very rustic, antique looking piece, especially with the hem stitch, hem stitch uh, that I did. I believe this is called a serpentine hem stitch, and it creates a really nice zigzag effect. Um, I will overlay a little reel that I had made for Instagram and I think I, I'm glad that I have this as like another tool in my toolbox but I think I prefer other methods because largely because of this big hole in the corner. I'm not crazy about how that looks uh, but I do like that you get a very clear zigzag. And just to compare, I have here the whoop, the 2022 version. This is a Frisian band sampler. And it's the exact same concept as, as this one, but it was just the 2022 version. And I used all the same floss and linen. But on this one, I did a different, a slightly different hem stitch, which I, and I think I prefer it. I don't know what the, you know, official name of it is, but it just seems a little bit tidier and cleaner. And uh, when I was at the Jacob Palooza retreat, I saw a lot of antiques that Jacob had brought and laid out and a lot of them had something that looked very similar to this. I kind of figured it out just by looking very closely at all the close-up pictures that I had taken of those antiques and trying to recreate it. So I don't know if I did it in a, you know, historically accurate way, but I'm happy with <laughs> with the end result. So now I have these two little pieces. This I already showed, but this is newer even though it's been almost three months since I finished it but anyways I think what I'm gonna do in floss tubes is that I'm just gonna like lay things out on my couch as I show them so that there's like a bit more visual interest you may have noticed that my little uh sampler wall that I built <laughs> in the last video did indeed come down uh it was a little crowded <laughs> 
but I do, I, I, I got some really nice suggestions from people in the comments about things I can do to frame in a more economical way because I was saying that framing is really expensive. And you know, thank you for the suggestions. I, all of these things are being considered still. Uh, there's definitely one piece in particular once I finish it that I would really like to have professionally framed because I think it is, it is worthy of being framed. But uh, until then, I'm just gonna maybe do some hem stitches and continue with my method of just rolling them up and putting them on my shelf over there. <laughs> Anyways, the next thing I want to show is a start that I started over the holidays. And this is also <laughs> a modern folk embroidery design. Most of what I have to show is that, as usual, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan. <laughs> and I kept on saying the last couple of videos, like, I need to stitch other designers. And here I am. I th currently have three whips and they're all modern folk embroidery. Anyways. Clearly, clearly I have a preference, it's fine. <laughs> so this is uh, something that I started right before I went home for the break. This is a quilter's dream and it is stitched on 46 count biscuit by Roxy Floss. And the colors that I'm using, and I'll just like zoom in on one of the corners so you can see all three of them. Uh, the navy blue is Goody Blue Shoes, which is one of my favorite colors ever. The light blue, which you can see in the border, is Powdered Up. And the pink is called Cherry Blossom. And Cherry Blossom was one of the, th one of the 25 colors that came in the 2023 Holiday Countdown box. And they, they were selling extra skeins of it afterwards. And I just was so jealous of the people who got that color. It was, I think, my favorite color from the set. I mean, I haven't seen them all in person, but just based off of what I was seeing online, this one really stood out to me. And I just think it's such a gentle color. So the way that I am planning on stitching this, and I will have on screen a mock-up of what the finished piece will look like, I plan on having pink only in these four corners. So I'm actually almost done with the pink. And then once I get to that middle motif, I'm just going to do it all in the navy blue, or well, the darker blue and the lighter blue. So powdered up and goody blue shoes, and the pink will just be in those four corners. And oh my goodness, relief stitching, <laughs> it looks so good. So stitching in the relief, if you don't know what I mean by that, it just means that you're stitching everything except for the image. So you're stitching the background. So all these like little flowers uh, and motifs are actually what you're seeing there is the linen and not the stitched design. So it creates a really, really cool effect, but counting wise, not getting lost, not making mistakes, it's really hard. And then if you do make a mistake, it's so annoying to frog it out because, <sighs> anyway, whatever. It's just, <laughs> it requires a lot of concentration. So I'm really excited for that fourth corner to be done because after that, it's going to be so much easier, <laughs> I think. Um, but anyways, it is beautiful. I really like the colors I chose. There's not a lot of contrast. There's actually more contrast on camera, I think, than there is in real life. But I do really like the powdery effect that, that it's creating. And I was thinking the other day that I think that this would be really beautiful in a nursery. So I'm thinking that... I mean, I don't really have any friends that are pregnant right now, but I'm sort of thinking that whenever this is done, I might hold on to it and wait until somebody I know has a baby and give it to them because I think this would look so nice in a nursery, right? I don't know. Or maybe I'll be selfish and just keep it. <laughs> that might also happen. <laughs> no guarantees. All right, so that's that. I'll put that over here. Okay, and then I'm kind of going in order, in chronological order, instead of like showing all my finishes. But over the Christmas break, which is when I did the majority of my work on this, I was, you know, visiting my family and we went to, I, so I visited my aunt and my aunt was like, oh, you need to go to this yarn store because they have a big cross stitch section. And my mom knits, so I figured it would be very hard to coerce her into going with me. <laughs> So I asked her like, hey mom, you wanna go? 
and she did. So we went to a yarn store to look at the cross stitching stuff. And I was just kind of curious about, you know, seeing patterns in a store. It's not exactly an LNS, it's definitely mostly a yarn store. And I almost don't want to say what it is because I don't want to like reveal what city I'm from, even though I don't live there. It's not a big deal, anyways, whatever. It's a yarn store that has a big cross stitching section in it. And <laughs> And of course, like, you know, my mom did that thing that moms do where she like saw me like looking at things that I liked and then decided that she was just going to buy it all for me, which was very unexpected and very, very nice of her. So I got a couple of things. <laughs> um, first of all, and I have it over here. I got these needles, which are, oop, but I, so, okay, size 10 ballpoint bead embroidery needles. So I had once upon a time tried Bowen size 10 beading needles that apparently were tapestry point, but they were still really sharp and they were they were splitting my linen. So I just kind of assumed that I didn't enjoy stitching with beading needles. But usually when people are talking about them, they seem to be talking about the John James one. Usually I stitch with Bowen's just like the regular uh, tapestry needles. Um, but anyways, I saw these there and I thought I would give it a second try. And these make a world of difference. They are definitely blunt enough. It says ballpoint bead embroidery. I mean, but they don't have a ballpoint. Like it's not like there's not like a bump at the tip of the needle. I don't know why it says that. Anyways, game changer when stitching on 46 count. So this here, I started stitching with 46 count once I got these so much easier oh my goodness this is a game changer it's like maybe not the like most exciting purchase uh in terms of like sh what to show on a haul but i recommend these these <laughs> totally changed my stitching experience on 46 count and i will definitely be getting more of these so thank you mom <laughs> and then i was pointing out uh Heartstring Samplery uh, considered the lilies and his eyes on the sparrow. So my mom got me those, which is super nice. These are two of my like dream board samplers that I would like to do one day. They're just so big. <laughs> they're so big. And I am working on other big projects. So they're not like at the front of the line of what to stitch next, but they are definitely ones that I would really, really like to have one day. And they're so beautiful. And uh, I don't know why one of them was in a booklet and one of them was was not. But anyways, I have both patterns now. And I was reading about this. I don't think I had ever seen anyone or heard anyone mention this, but his eye is on the sparrow was like the hundredth design that Beth Twist had released. And then this was the, consider the lilies was the 200th design. So maybe when she gets to 300 designs, we'll be getting another gigantic sampler and I'll have a third one that I'll have to stitch. Oh no. <laughs> Anyways, these are beautiful. And yeah, it is really interesting to see uh, her artistry kind of develop in between 100 patterns and 200 patterns. Yet at the same time, you can totally tell that these are sister patterns. So these are beautiful ones. I don't think I need to speak too much on them because they have been shown plenty on floss too, but now I finally own them. And I get to just, even if you don't stitch them, it's just fun to like look at the pattern and read what the person had to say about it. Anyways, I like that kind of stuff. So once again, thank you, mom. <laughs> and then the last thing that my mom got me, which was a combination of things, I pulled out, I mean, I was, there were a couple of samplers there that I pulled out and I was showing my mom like, oh, I like this one because of this. And I like this one because of that. And oh, I've seen like three people stitch this just this week. Anyways, one of the ones that I pulled out and that I was showing her that I, and I was telling her that I really liked it is, oh, it's just called A Dutch Sampler by Kathy Barrick. And my mom really, really liked this one. And she said, can you stitch that for me? And I said, uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> So she also got me all the DMC. So I will be stitching this for my mom and I hope to have it done by Christmas. This could be her Christmas present, except I have like so many other things that I wanna stitch. It's okay, I'll get to it eventually. I have all the DMC and the linen that I'm gonna use, and this is something that I already had. It calls for, I believe it calls for Havana 
by weeks. Let me just double check that. But yes, it calls for Havana by weeks. I don't have any of that. What I do have is this linen by number 12 Stitch Co. And earlier I was trying to read the name <laughs> and I'm having a really hard time reading that handwriting. It looks like it says Autumn Bean or Autumn Bear. Anyways, I'll look at my old receipt. <laughs> I'll put it on screen because I can't read that. But this looks like Havana to me. I've never seen Havana in real life, but based off of what I see on the internet, this looks like a Havana dupe. And if I look at the cover, I think that's a pretty good match. And in any case, these all of these colors look really nice on here. So even if it's not an exact dupe to Havana, uh, I think it, it'll work perfectly for this sampler. And it's really beautiful. And I have used uh, number 12 Stitch Go once before. I uh, showed that sampler in my last video and I really, really liked working with it. So I, I know it'll turn out great and it has some really nice modeling and it just makes me happy. And then I get to make it for my mom. Cause I, I've already stitched quite a few things for her. <laughs> But you know, if I have like an excuse to just stitch something and it feels like, oh, well, it's not for me, it's somebody else needs it, then I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. Not that I ever feel like I'm wasting my time, but it just gives me more of a purpose. Like I have an even better excuse to be spending more of my time stitching, right? Anyways, so that's what my mom got me, but I also got her something. So she got, you know, all excited about cross-stitching because she saw me get all excited about cross-stitching. And so I ended up buying her a Mill Hill kit. <laughs> if you compare all of the stuff that she bought for me versus my dinky little Mill Hill kit that I got for her, uh, it was not exactly the most fair of trades. But, <laughs> but anyways, I got her the kit. And then when we went home, I like kind of taught her the very basics of stitching it and she finished it. There is a funny story though, she did run into quite a disaster. So she made a boo-boo and she took a seam ripper to the perforated paper. <laughs> and of course the paper ripped and she destroyed the paper and she had to start over. So she went to the store that we had gone to to buy just like plain brown perforated paper so that she could start over. And she sent me a picture of the, the very gory picture that I will share here. <laughs> and, you know, like anybody who is uh, of the age of the internet and has a social media accounts, I uh, shared that picture on my Instagram stories, <laughs> totally exposing my mom. And then somebody replied to my story and was like, oh, that's so funny. Somebody just came into my shop this morning to buy perforated paper for the exact same reason. And then I was like, ha 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 ha, do you live in this city and work in this shop? Because if you do, that was definitely my mom. And then like five minutes went by and I was like, okay, Carmen, you've just asked a total stranger on the internet what, where they live and where they work. <laughs> like, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe that's not appropriate. So then I messaged her back and I was like, you don't have to answer those questions if you don't want to. Maybe that was like a little bit inappropriate. Anyways, it turns out, yes, indeed, that woman was working at the store and met my mom. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if I should like say who it is because I don't want to like expose anyone, but somebody who follows me on Instagram met my mom <laughs> at the yarn store. <laughs> Anyways, it is a small world. Um, my mom did end up stitching it over again and she figured it out with the beads and everything. There were a couple of phone calls and questions that she had, but she, for the most part, she figured it out on her own. And then she said that she doesn't want to have any more cross stitch kits because then she won't get to her knitting because she seemed to really, really enjoy cross stitching. But to me that just screams, well, maybe you should just be cross stitching instead of knitting. Anyways, maybe that's a bit of a controversial take. <laughs> Anyways, I was very proud of my mom and you know, I've converted somebody to cross stitching, which is always, always good news. <laughs> okay, so then I get home and it's, New Year's Day and I did this last year too where I started something new on New Year's Day. I know that's kind of a popular thing that a lot of people do. Um, so that's what I did and I had something all kitted up and ready to go and I had chosen to do Blackbird Designs The Winter Is Past as my New Year's Day start. 
which I did. And then, well, there's kind of a bit of a journey with this whole sampler and it's, there's a lot of ups and downs. So I did, I basically stitched the border and then I stopped and I'll, I did eventually finish it and I will show it to you. But this kind of goes into the why I haven't really made a floss tube in a while. Um, so <laughs> this might sound kind of silly, but I was like a little bit overwhelmed by all of the eyes that were on me on floss tube and even on Instagram. Like I made a reel of me making a hemp stitch on this and like just it. I don't understand how Instagram works because every once in a while you'll have a post that just kind of like blows up. Anyways, it sorry, it was just like a lot more, uh, I guess, attention than I was expecting. <laughs> and it was all positive, but there was a lot of like, well, I need to answer everybody's comment. And but I can't do it unless I have time to answer everybody all at once. But I don't have enough time. Oh, but I'm too tired. Oh, but I have a headache now. Oh, but what if I say the wrong thing? And anyway. I kind of like got into a little bit of an anxiety spiral. So I did what any avoidant does, which is that I didn't deal with it at all. And I just let it be and I didn't do any floss tubing. And I actually kind of stopped stitching too. I started the winter's past and then I did something else for like a month and a half, which was knitting. I on... I'll tell this story a little bit more when I get to the knitting portion of the video, but I really immersed myself in something totally different. I feel like I got kind of overwhelmed with all of the floss tube uh, attention, which was really positive and I don't want it to sound like I'm complaining because I'm I feel very lucky, uh, but you know, it's just... I can't be anonymous anymore <laughs> and I am happy to be doing this so I don't want anybody to like get the wrong idea but you know it's just a, a, a more attention more quickly than I was anticipating so <laughs> anyways um so I kind of just stopped stitching for a while and I avoided I avoided cross stitch I even like stopped watching floss tube however when all my favorite floss tubers which is there's a lot of them posted a video I added it to my watch later list and that list has like 70 videos in it now <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to watch them all I have like four Pam and Steph videos in my queue like do I just watch the most recent one or do I watch all four that's like my biggest problem in my life right now <laughs> anyways I took a break I took a breather and I kind of needed that because it was just a little bit too much and I started knitting for a while and then I got really intense about knitting and I finished like seven pairs of socks in six weeks or something like really ridiculous like that and then I was really missing cross stitching I have a bit of a like an all or nothing mindset and I have a hard time finding balance sometimes I talked about this in my last video it was like I do it in a really intense way or I don't do it at all. <laughs> so I started doing knitting in a really intense way and then I didn't do any stitching for a while. But eventually I kind of like sat down and was like, okay. Actually, it was around the time that I finished uh, that I filmed my finished parade where I was like, okay, you can you can find a better balance and like you can knit when you're at work and whatever, but if you feel like stitching, by all means, go and stitch. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> So I went back to Blackbird Designs and it just took me a couple more days to finish it. And that's what I did. And for this, I used all of the called for Weeks Dye Works flosses. And the linen that I used is Speculas by Roxy Floss, which I think is my favorite linen of theirs. My other piece that I'm going to show is on the exact same linen. <laughs> and I really love the color palette on this. I talked about this when I did my uh, kit parade, but I love the colors of this. I think they're very appropriate for deep winter. A lot of, a lot of blues and grays. And there are some really fun um, specialty stitches in here. So we've got eyelets. And I, for some reason, was under the impression that everybody hated stitching eyelets. And then I did a poll on my Instagram stories and I think it was like 90% of people who answered said they loved eyelets. So I don't know where I got that idea, but I really enjoy doing eyelets. And then there is some satin stitch in 
two of the baskets, but most prominently this uh, central one here. And then there's some Smyrna crosses in this blue heart here. Whoop. Anyways, I think this is a very, very beautiful piece. Blackbird Designs somehow really manages to make quite sentimental, touching pieces. And a lot of people have spoken about why Blackbird Designs speaks to them so much. So the only like difference that I made when I initially stitched it is that I didn't put my initials. So here you have an A over one, and then there's another A over one. I'm guessing that's Alma Adams. No, Alma Allen, oops. Anyways, I guess Alma stitched this. So those are her initials. And uh, I'm not really into stitching my own initials into things. So I left it. However, if you look at it, you will see that there are now some initials. So as I was finishing this, something kind of sad happened in my life. So I put in the last stitches into my sampler. I took some pictures, I shared them to my Instagram story. I was like, yay, I finished, this was my first finish of the year technically, and it was like the end of February. And on that day, I had some rehearsals in the afternoon and I wanted to take a quick shower before going to work. And then I saw that I had a notification on my phone and I checked it and it was a message from my dad letting me and my siblings know that my grandma had, well, at the time they thought she'd had a stroke. It ended up being that she had gone into cardiac arrest and that she was in the hospital, but that, you know, it was a little bit touch and go and that we should, you know, be prepared. And my Nona uh, is 92 years old and just, okay, I don't want to talk about her too much because if I do, I will cry <laughs> and I don't want to cry on the internet, but I grew up very close with my grandparents. They lived in the house next door to us, um, but it was basically a three generation household. Like we had a balcony that we shared. So we would, we would be at their house like every day. Close Italian family, immigrant family. My grandparents immigrated twice in their life from Italy to Argentina to Canada, restarted several times and all they had was their family. So very, very close family, grew up having big family meals with all the cousins and the aunts and uncle basically every Sunday. So they were a big part of my childhood. You know, I was raised by my parents, but my grandparents definitely had a big hand in that. My Nono passed away in 2005. So my Nona was 19 years without him. And as I mentioned, she was 92. So it wasn't exactly like a huge shocking surprise. Like I think we've all kind of been preparing ourselves for this day, but it's still very sad. Anyway, so she was in the hospital overnight and she ended up passing away in the early hours of the morning the next day. And I realized after she passed away that the last thing that I, or I realized the next morning that the last, like right when she went into cardiac arrest, I would have been putting the last stitches into the sampler. And you know, in my sorrow and sentimentality, I decided to, instead of my own initials, to put hers in there. So that's why you'll see the teeny tiny little F and B in there. And actually my Nona has her maiden name initial and her married name initial are the same. So that's kind of cool. And yeah, so, you know, kind of a sad, kind of a sad end to this sampler, but it felt appropriate. I actually stitched the over one in hand. Uh, I feel like usually people do the opposite. <laughs> like I hear a lot of um, floss tubers who stitch in hand will only use a hoop or a frame when they're doing over one. So I stitched this in a frame, except for the over one, not to brag or anything. <laughs> I just couldn't be bothered to put it back in my frame. So anyways, I was very, very lucky to have my grandma for as long as I did. She was a very, very kind woman, just so full of love, spoiled the heck out of us. And, you know, talking to some friends and colleagues over the last couple of weeks, I'm realizing like how lucky I am to have known all four of my grandparents. Like some people didn't know any of them or, you know, maybe just one 
or maybe they knew them, but they lived far away. And you know, my mom's parents lived a little further away, so I didn't see them as much until more recently. Her dad now lives in uh, in our hometown, so I see him a lot more now than I did when I was a kid. Um, but he is my last grandparent now. But I, until I was 13, I had all four of my grandparents, and two of them, you know, my nona and nono, I had a really, really close relationship with them. So I'm very, very grateful. Ultimately, of all the feelings that I have, gratitude. Anyways, I'm going to take a little break now because now I'm sad. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Sorry, I needed to take a minute. I definitely wasn't... <laughs> crying <laughs> that would be embarrassing anyways whatever it's all good it's all part of life you know that's how it goes anyways a beautiful sampler for a beautiful lady in my life my nona anyway it's really interesting how blackbird I, like i've heard so many stories on floss tube about like the sentimentality of of some of their pieces and it i don't I don't know that it's a coincidence that that this ended up happening with a blackbird piece. Anyways, so I love it, but it also kind of makes me a little sad to look at now, if I can be quite honest. Anyways, we're going to move on to some more happy, positive things. So after that, I went on tour with my orchestra for a while, and I had announced a sal a little while ago that Jacob Sleeper Sal, which has now started. I mean, it didn't really have a very strong start date. I had initially said March 1st, and then I realized I was gonna be traveling. So I didn't actually start till the 10th of March, which is the day that I got back from my tour. Uh, but uh, today is the ooh, 12th of March, I believe. So it is day three of stitching for me, and I didn't really stitch very much yet today. I just, I did, these six letters and this blue line. <laughs> so most of this was over the first two days. And this is my start on Charlotte Ramsey by Modern Folk Embroidery. And wow, you can't see it at all in this light, but yeah, okay, maybe a little bit when I have it in this direction, but yeah, there's there are some letters in there. <laughs> yeah, there's some tone on tone. And this is a beautiful conversion that was made for me by uh, Hannah of Evertote using all Roxy Floss uh, products. So this is again, Spiculas, the best linen of all time. And uh, I think there's like 12, 12 colors. I'm, I'm, I could be wrong. And actually when I was talking to her, she said, oh, this is great. I actually just made a conversion of this for somebody else. Is it you? Is one of those people you? I'm so curious who else is stitching this in the exact same colors that I am. I must know. I'm sure that Evertote would not be allowed to share that information with me, but I am very curious. So if it was you and you feel comfortable letting me know, hi, <laughs> we're making sister projects. Anyways, I'm loving working on this. This is my first Scottish sampler and it's so joyful. It has such, such pretty happy colors and um, I will have on screen like a mock-up of the finished thing, but I also wanted to show Joan Sands. And I think this is a, a maybe a more known, more popular chart. I've seen more people stitching on this. But I feel like those two samplers would look so nice together. And I could be wrong, but I think my piece of linen, I think the like leftovers that I will have will be big enough to also do this. Because this is about half the size. And a lot of the colors are really similar. There are more colors in it, however. There's like way more colors in it than, than in Charlotte Ramsey. However, some of the colors have like 36 stitches. So I might, I, I kind of am tempted to try and make a conversion using just the colors from Charlotte Ramsey and use the same flosses and the same piece of linen if it fits. And then they can really be sister samplers because there's there's a lot of similarity there between these two charts. I was like racking my brain like maybe maybe they knew each other, but I think there's like a 16 year age gap and you know, chances are they did not know each other. <laughs> but there's definitely some parallels there with all the letters on the top and the motifs on the bottom, the carnations and the color palette and they're Scottish. I just think that they 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 really complement each other. So. 
This is uh, the pattern I bought it at the uh, Jacob Palooza retreat. Oh, this pattern is printed so big. It's great. <laughs> Ooh, there's eyelets in this too. Yeah, there's there's gonna be eyelets in this. And I was just talking about how much I like eyelets. So, yay, eyelets! <laughs> and I wanted to leave it in this frame because every time I've shown this frame, I've gotten questions about it. And I just wanna talk about it for a second because I love this frame. So I bought this on Etsy from a shop called Embroidery Nook PL. I'm assuming the PL stands for Poland because the shop is in Poland. And it is very similar to a Millennium frame. I actually read a comment online at some point that apparently the pieces are interchangeable with Millennium frames, but I can't confirm that. I just I vaguely remember reading that online. But anyways, it's a, certainly a similar concept to the Millennium frame. And yeah, you just, you know, you tighten it by screwing these things. And then when I'm not stitching, I loosen it up a little bit so that there's some slack in the linen. And in the past, when using this frame, I have used these things to create tension on the sides. Here, hold on, I'll show you. So I have done this before to create a bit of side tension, because I know like the big advantage with Ominic frames is that they have those like side stretcher bars, which I think for especially really wide pieces can be quite helpful. So I've kind of worked around that by just having these what are they called? Cool Smart Magnets, I believe. However, lately I've been enjoying stitching with less tension, so I haven't really been using them as much. But anyways, I highly recommend it. Nobody's paying me to say that. <laughs> I bought this with my own money. I just think this frame is great. And a lot of people ask me about it every time I show it. So there's your answer. I will be linking that shop online. It's not like the cheapest thing ever. Um, I still think it's like very fairly priced. I believe it was less than $200. Uh, but yeah, it was an investment for me. However, I use it all the time. With the exception of like linen and floss, this is my favorite cross-stitching piece of equipment <laughs> that I have used. It's super stable. And I stitch, I don't use a stand. I will kind of like sit on the corner of my couch. The arm of my couch is right here. I'll put my knee up and I'll kind of have it propped like that and I'll stitch, I stitch two-handed like this. I don't know if that makes sense, but I've also had people ask me what, what stand I use and I, I don't use a stand. However, it might not be like the best posture and I might like <laughs> injure myself at some point doing that. So maybe maybe I'll have to rethink my, my methods, but for now that's that's what I've been doing and I feel like I can stitch pretty quickly that way and I'm pretty comfortable. So anyways, I love this stand and I love sampler and it's gonna be so pretty when it's done and it kind of reminds me of in the garden of holland which i stitched around this time last year and also had like very bright spring color some some pastels and so i feel like maybe this is going to be a tradition like in march of every year i'm gonna stitch something that's quite joyful and light <laughs> and honestly after my grandma passing away and everything like and then that's the thing, like I immediately went on tour afterwards and then I had like a funeral in the middle of it and it was just like so heavy and sad. And like all I could think about was like when I get home, I have three days off and I'm just gonna stitch this all day long. <laughs> so like the motivation to come back home and just like get through those couple of weeks and have this as my present at the end has been wonderful. Anyways, um, I do want to mention that the linen and the floss were gifted to me by Evertote and Roxy Floss. So I, I, I don't know if I'm like required to disclose that, but I do want to like just be, be transparent about that. I think I just like gave them a lot of shout outs on my floss tube and this was like their way of saying thank you. But, <laughs> but I was planning on reaching out to ask for conversion from Hannah anyways. So like for me, it worked out great. But anyways, I do genuinely love their their product line and you know I've made a couple conversions of my own on my own accord <laughs> because I genuinely really like like what they have and uh the kinds of projects that they do anyways so that's my progress that's just a little over two days worth of stitching um you know the sun is setting here so I don't have that much time left today to stitch but maybe I'll get like another row of these big letters 
I think I have two more rows of big letters and then one row of eyelet letters and then one row of curly Q letters and then I'll be halfway done. And then everything that's below that is like the fun motifs. So I like to, you know, eat my vegetables first and do the boring stuff, even though this actually isn't boring at all. It's so exciting and wonderful. <laughs> okay, calm down, Carmen. All right, so that actually kind of leads me to the end of my cross stitching, which is wild. Cause I feel like floss tube is supposed to be all cross stitching, but I'm about to talk about knitting now for a while. Anyways, so if you are not interested in hearing me talk about socks, <laughs> totally fair. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. No, no harm, no foul. I will bid you farewell here. However, if you are into socks, hello, you're about to see eight pairs of socks. Wait, no, seven pairs of socks. Cause one of them is not with me anymore, but you're about to see a whole bunch of socks and hear about my sock journey. So, okay. So you'll remember that I had gone to that yarn store with my mom. And as I was leaving the shop, right next to the door was this whole wall of sock yarns. And I had this like fleeting passing thought as I walked out the door, which was like, oh, those yarns look so nice. It would be so nice to be able to knit socks because then I could just knit all these socks with all those pretty yarns. And then I kind of just went about my day and forgot about it. <laughs> and this is a fleeting thought that I've had many, many times. So I have two pairs of hand knit socks. You know what? I'm going to go get them. Be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I'm here with my socks that I did not make. So I have two pairs of socks here that were given to me as gifts. One by my old roommate Fiona, who I mentioned in my very first floss tube, because she's a friend of Karen, who I met at Jacob Palooza. Anyways, she knit me a pair of socks. Here they are. Um, it's like a yarn that fades into different colors. And it's kind of a, yeah, there's a ribbing here. And, <laughs> and they're beautiful and perfect and precious. And every once in a while, I'll take them out of my sock drawer and I just look at them. But I have never worn them because I know how much work goes into them. And I feel like the most disrespectful thing I could do to Fiona is put my stinky, disgusting feet in this beautiful work of art that she labored over for me, <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose of socks and of gifts, to be quite honest. <laughs> But I know how much work went into it, and I don't want to wreck them. They're too nice. And then it's the exact same story with these socks, which was a self-striping yarn, I believe, and my mom made these for me, and it's the exact same story. I take them out of my sock drawer, I look at them, they're beautiful, they look so nice, but I'm not putting these on my feet. That would wreck them. Then they wouldn't be nice anymore. <laughs> but I love hand-knit socks. I think they look so nice. They, they're so cozy and like the fact that it was made by hand by somebody who loves you <laughs> it's like so nice anyways so I've had these socks for years and I never wear them and it has occurred to me many times that if I want to actually wear hand knit socks I'm going to have to make them myself because I'm not going to wear socks that people make for me because it just feels rude <laughs> and disrespectful <laughs> So they end up just languishing in my sock drawer and I just like look at them and ooh and on. Ah, then I put them away. So finally I was like, you know what? I gotta, I just, I just gotta do it. I just gotta learn how to knit, knit socks so I can stop complaining about how I can't wear my knit socks that people make for me. So New Year's Eve, December 31st. No, New Year's Eve, Eve, December 30th. That night I couldn't sleep. I was up all night because I was thinking about socks. I'm a little bit intense sometimes. <laughs> and I just had this like tunnel vision, hyper fixation on hand knit socks and how I must learn how to knit socks. Otherwise my life, quality of life will be so much worse. <laughs> and so, you know, I, that night I, you know, at a certain point I kind of gave up on trying to fall asleep. So of course I pull up my phone and I go on YouTube and I, I just Googled like, how to knit socks beginner and a video by uh, an account called Vulan Vine came up and it had a million views. So therefore it must be legit <laughs> because lots of views means it's good, right? Anyways, it, it, spoiler alert, it is good. Anyways, I watched this video start to finish. It's about half an hour 
and then I watched it again and then I watched it again and then I watched it again and then I made a list of all of the things that she used to make her socks and then I found a yarn shop in Canada and I, that had everything that I needed in stock and I placed an order that very night at like you know three in the morning <laughs> and then I went home I left my parents house and I came back and I watched that video again and then I watched it another time and you know in that time I had started stitching winter has passed but I was just thinking about socks socks and how I needed to knit socks and I'd never knit before I mean I have this like very vague memory of having put a couple rows into a scarf that somebody was showing me how to just do like a knit stitch probably my mom I'm assuming I don't really know if this is like a real memory if, or if it's like one of those things where like you you dreamt it once and now your little kid brain is like, did that actually happen or am I imagining things? Anyways, I might have knit like three rows in a, in a scarf once when I was a kid, but for all intents and purposes, I'd never knit before. And so I watched this video so many times and honestly that video, it's very good for beginners, but it is assumed that you know how to do like basic knit and purl stitches and that you know how to like cast on <laughs> and stuff like that. So I did like have to watch some other supplementary videos to answer the questions that I had when she was like going a little bit too quickly for me. But I mostly just learned how to knit by watching that video at least, and I'm not exaggerating, at least 10 times start to finish. And then a whole bunch of other times where I just watched like the little bits of it that I needed. And so on January 3rd, I couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> The order had, I mean, it was over like the Christmas break, so things always take a little bit longer to come through the mail. So I found a shop, a yarn shop in my city, and I just, I went and I bought the things that I needed. <laughs> well, I bought uh, two and a half millimeter um, circular needles and a skein of sock yarn. And the skein of sock yarn, I have it right here. Well, this is what's left of it. And this is, hold on. Hold on, this is Highland Alpaca Fine by Estelle, and it is 53% Highland wool, 20% alpaca, and 27% recycled nylon in this really cool mustardy color. And I went home and fiddled around with the needles and the yarn, and he made some mistakes and did a swatch and ripped it apart and restarted a bunch of times. It took me a minute to get it, <laughs> but yeah. I made these socks. These were my first pair of socks that I ever made. They definitely have some, you know, flaws. There's a big old hole, the classic hole that happens right there. <laughs> uh, but you know, I figured it out and I made socks and they fit me fine. And you know, I've worn these the most out of all of the socks and they're like a little bit felted at the bottom. That's probably partly due to the alpaca, which I've learned is a fiber that felt a lot, <laughs> but I love these. These are, you know, they're perfectly fine. They're not perfect, but you know, for my very first knitting project, I'm like super proud of myself for this. <laughs> and you know, big thank you to Vine. her video. Like I, I learned how to knit because of her she, she, and she went slow enough. And I think it was a great video. There were like a couple things that I had to look up just cause I had never done it before, but for the most part, I was able to learn how to knit just from watching that video. And it's funny because she knits English style, so now I knit English style because I just <laughs> modeled my actions after what I was seeing in this video. <laughs> so that was my first pair of socks. And then finally in the mail came that order that I had, that I had ordered. And I had ordered two skeins of yarn. This is what I have left of them. Um, but they were both from the same company. Um, Alegria by Manos de Uruguay and this is what I have left of eucalyptus and this one was called sand and so my second pair of socks which I don't have anymore uh, because I gave them to my boyfriend were exactly the same as my first pair but just in the eucalyptus uh, Manos de Uruguay yarn and those I made a little bit bigger because his feet are a little bit bigger than mine and oh okay yeah actually so before i even started knitting the socks i had mentioned to my boyfriend that i had this like new hyperfixation which was knitting socks and then i, I kind of floated the idea like i could knit you socks and he seemed like excited about that and oh my this was like music to my ears because i find it so hard to get gifts for guys like i know exactly what to get my mom and my sister for christmas because they like the things i like 
But for my my brother and my dad and my boyfriend, like I have no idea. And I really like giving people gifts, but I, I'm not like that good at knowing what to get <laughs> anyway. So when he was like, oh, I like socks. I was like, oh, this is great news. <laughs> so I, the second pair of socks that I knit were for him. And you know, I think I might've taken a picture of them on my feet. I think I tried them on and took a picture, but I don't have them with me anymore, but he wears them a lot and it like makes me feel so good. <laughs> so. I have, he will, he will be receiving more socks from me. You can, you can bet your bottom dollar. And it just makes me so happy to be able to make something that he likes, yay. <laughs> anyway, so enter into my sock knitting journey. The Knotted Owl, Michelle, Knotted Owl on Instagram. I met her at the Jacob Palooza retreat and I was posting to my stories that I was knitting socks. And she gave me like so many suggestions for patterns and wool. And we started, the next socks that I'm, that I'm gonna show you, we started together. She ended up having some issues with her yarn, I think. So she, she, did, she ended up switching projects to something else, but whatever. I started this with her. This was my third pair of socks. I really wanted to stitch lace sorry to knit lace oh my goodness i'm getting my crafts all mixed up now so she found us um this free pattern oh wait no i'm skipping i'm out of order forget that but 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 erase that from your memory the next one that i knit was hermione's everyday sock and this was a recommendation from michelle and it's a free pattern and it's designed by erica luder and it's a pattern on Ravelry that's been up since I think like 2009. They're called Hermione's Everyday Socks. And it totally makes sense because I remember like 2009, that would have been like peak Harry Potter popularity. <laughs> I don't know exactly what about these makes them Harry Potter, but <laughs> whatever. They just have like this uh, knit pearl pattern that's like very, very basic that creates a really fun texture. It just makes it a little bit more interesting to knit. Cause I will admit that once I got to the second sock for my boyfriend, which was all in stockinette, cause it's really just pure vanilla sock, I was starting to get bored. So this, I don't know why, but it felt like it went by so much faster. And I think it's because there was a pattern, even though it's a very similar pattern to repeat. It's a four row repeat and you know, four rows is like, you know, a quarter of an inch instead of 16th of an inch so it feels like it goes faster I didn't actually really follow the pattern for like the cuff for the heel I just used the same one as the volantine the only difference is that for the leg and for the instep what's this the top of the foot is that called the in no the instep is the bottom part anyways whatever the top of the foot <laughs> I use that, that pattern from Hermione's Everyday Socks. So that was a recommendation from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. And I would totally make these socks plenty of times again. The thing is, there are so many sock patterns I wanna do. So I don't know if I will end up doing them again. But yeah, it's like super easy, highly recommended. And uh, for the yarn, I used the two Alegria Manos de Uruguay uh, colors that I had. And uh, I used this little bit of eucalyptus that I had left over. And I'm actually working on a third pair of socks with this same skein of yarn. Uh, so I'm going to have that color in a lot of socks now. But I'll get to that once I get to it. All right, so that was pair number three. Pair number four was cozy, what are these called? Cozy Autumn Socks by This Handmade Life. Once again, a free pattern on Ravelry. And I will be linking all of these in the description and this is uh it was while knitting these socks that i learned of uh lifelines <laughs> and the importance of lifelines so if you make a mistake or you drop some stitches you don't have to rip the entire sock out <laughs> you can just go back those like four or five rows pick up your stitches and you're good anyways learned that the hard way because i had gotten like i don't know maybe this much of the first sock done and drop some stitches and yeah, dropping stitches in lace, you can pick it up. I watched a couple of videos, but I, I just, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And I, I think I do have a picture of what my yarn looked like after I'd unraveled it. And I feel like it looked like ramen. <laughs> Anyways, the yarn I used for this is Drops Nord. This is what I have left of it. 
And since this is a non-super wash, I, when I got to my second skein, I was able to like, I think people call it spit splicing, where you like get it wet and you rub it together and then they like join together. I didn't use my spit because that sounded kind of gross. I just used water. But anyways, that was kind of cool. And I really like this yarn. I haven't worn these socks yet because I've been waiting to show them on a floss tube. <laughs> but apparently, apparently it felt a lot. Um, how much, there's a lot of alpaca in this. Yeah, it's 45% alpaca, 30% polyamide, and 25% wool. So alpaca felts apparently, so maybe these will felt, but I don't know if that's really that big of a deal. Does it make them weaker? I feel like it would make them stronger. It would just make them like less stretchy and maybe it wouldn't be that pretty anymore. But as long as it's just like in the heel and the bottom of the foot, I don't really see what the problem is there. Anyways. I think these are beautiful. Once again, I would totally knit these again. And we'll see how they wear because I really like the feeling of this wool and it's starting to get too warm to wear really warm socks, but I think these are gonna be really nice in the winter time next year. So, super happy with those. They're gorgeous. And I really like that this yarn has, I believe the, I believe the knitting YouTube, YouTubers call it a halo. <laughs> where there's, you can just sort of see the fibers coming off the side. And I think that makes it look really cozy and nice. Anyways, I don't think it's really showing up on camera, but trust me, they're there. I really, these are, oh, they're so soft and nice. Okay, then I had watched enough videos about people knitting socks. And don't worry, I will get to the knitting podcasts in a moment. But enough people that I watched online had mentioned this book, uh, which is by Len Publishing, and it is called 52 Weeks of Socks. There's also like a 52 weeks of shawls, 52 weeks of, of everything you can think of, and there's even a second volume of 52 Weeks of Socks. And these are some pretty fancy socks in here. I mean, I think some of them are a bit simpler, but I decided that I was going to take on the challenge of knitting all of the socks in here. Yes, I am out of my mind. Uh, it's definitely going to take me more than 52 weeks. I think I would be able to do it in 52 weeks if I did literally nothing else in my life. <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, I have a job and I like to cross stitch and, you know, I have to travel sometimes. So not really feasible to do in a year for me, <laughs> but it's what I'm going to try to do. I'm gonna have to make a bunch of edits to this video because now that I've been talking for a while, my throat is getting dry and I'm recovering from a cold. So that's gonna be fun in editing. Anyways, so the first pattern in here, I plan on making, should I say it? I'm just gonna say it. I'm like kind of making a little video series right now about these socks to have as kind of standalone videos because I would really like to be able to knit all of the socks in here. <laughs> we'll see how long that takes me. But anyways, I'm starting from the beginning and the very first sock was the Intersection Sock designed by Marceline Smith. This was a toe up sock with cabling. So those were two new things for me. And I love these. Again, I have not worn these yet because I've been waiting to show them online before I wear them. Uh, but I love these and the yarn I used is Arveta by Filcalana. This is a super wash. It's very, very soft. Um, I like it quite a bit. And I love this color too. It's like such a, like a red squirrel. I think that's what this color was called, red squirrel. Anyways, beautiful. I like it a lot. I think they're gorgeous. And cabling's not too bad. I have a little cabling needle. Here's my little cabling needle. Apparently you can cable without a needle, but I'm not that advanced yet, so I'm not gonna take that risk. For now, I use this guy. All right, the next pair of socks in this book almost destroyed me. It is definitely the most difficult thing that I've knit so far. However, also maybe the most beautiful. So this is the Avena sock. Ooh. So look how pretty those are. Gorgeous, gorgeous socks. Designed by Natalia Vasilieva. And I used socks, yeah, by Koopnitz. I don't know if it's Koopnitz or Co-op Knits. 
It's again, super wash merino wool and 25% nylon. However, there's something a little bit different about this wool. It just, it feels much sturdier and less fluffy than the other super wash wools that I've used so far. So I really like this. It might, maybe tied with Drops Nord be my favorite sock yarn that I've used so far. It's much lighter though, it's not as thick. So it's maybe more appropriate for like a summertime sock. However, these are quite thick. So here they are. This had a lot of what is called, I think, dip stitches. And it also has a really interesting sole. It has shaping on the sole. And I thought that this was just like, cause it's pretty, which it is. Kind of makes it look like there's a leaf petal on the bottom of the sock, but actually it kind of hugs the bottom of your foot. It's quite comfortable. But anyways, this is not a simple pattern. This is not a beginner friendly pattern. Like this was too difficult for me. It took me, I think more than half of my knitting time was actually just spent studying the pattern and trying to understand the pattern. Cause not only are there some more like advanced techniques, but I think there are actually some errors in the pattern. There's definitely like grammatical errors and I'm not like trying to be grammar police, but like just like the way things were structured made it even more difficult to understand. Sometimes there were like parts of the pattern that were a little bit redundant and then it was hard to distinguish what information was just like redundancy and repetitiveness and what was actually crucial for me to pay attention to. So like there's three pages of information for this sock and it probably could have been in two pages, I think. Also, I feel like there could have been a way that they could have done a chart instead of writing everything out uh, there is no chart for this. Anyways, I did eventually figure it out. The really complicated, hard to understand bit was the gusset increases. Um, if you do end up <laughs> making this sock, the increases happen in the big, in the middle of the back of the foot instead of on the sides, which is what I'm used to. Just spend some time studying the pattern if you do this. And, uh, you know, the final product is definitely like the most beautiful, gorgeous thing that you will have ever laid your eyes on. But the journey getting there was a little bit rough. <laughs> but I did it. I prevailed. Really love the yarn. I think they're beautiful. They fit well. Now that they're done, I don't have any complaints. But I don't think I would knit these again. It was just way too hard. <laughs> All right, so the next pair of socks that I worked on were these ones, the Jilly socks. And at first I didn't really like this pattern. I thought they looked kind of weird, but then they really, really grew on me the more I looked at them. And this is designed by Ainur Berkimbayeva. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but anyways, for this pair of socks, and they're actually kind of wet right now because I washed them and they're not totally dry yet. <clears throat> anyways. I used a really cool yarn for this. So I used a Canadian wool from Canadian sheep that are like a 20 minute drive for me, which is totally wild. <laughs> like this sheep is my neighbor. And it comes from Les Brebis du Beau Rivage, uh, Ferme Les Brebis du Beau Rivage farm. Anyways, the yarn shop that is near me sells some of this yarn. I think you can only get it at that yarn shop. I'm not totally sure. Anyways. This is undyed. They did have some colors that were dyed, but I just got the basic one. There was also a gray undyed, and in hindsight, I kind of wish I had gotten the gray one instead of this like really creamy color. But anyways, uh, definitely a very rustic yarn. Uh, it's not soft at all, <laughs> um, but still really cool. And I think there's just something really valuable about being able to locally source your fibers. That's like so special to me. Uh, this had an afterthought heel, or I guess it's a forethought heel because I had to put some scrap yarn in there. And kind of a weird heel because there ends up being like two bumps. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Anyways, I also, uh, I mean, I use the recommended needle size, but in hindsight, I wish I had either stitched the smaller size, I stitch it in the larger size, but I, yeah, basically the socks are slightly too big. Now, the reason why they're wet, I washed them and then I like kind of, you know, did that thing where I squeezed all the water out. And then I did 
something bad. I broke the cardinal rule of hand knit garments that are made out of non super wash wool, which is that I put them in the dryer because I was hoping to shrink them just a little bit, but I'd put them in the dryer for like a couple of minutes. So I don't know if they're any smaller. They don't look felted. They look pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to let them dry and hopefully they're like just teeny tiny bit smaller and if not then whatever i've been just wearing them around the house they're a little bit too big but it's fine and they have this cool thing where the front of the leg kind of creates this well you can see it better in the picture i i that's actually the element that i didn't like at first but the more i looked at them the more i liked them and they're super super cozy and a really unique uh construction and design and yeah that was pair number seven. This is pair number seven. Now, the most recent pair that I finished are also wet because I, you know, had just finished them and I, they are still on the sock blockers. Here they are. They are socks number four in this book. The branches socks. And I was really excited to get to these because I got to knit lace again and I love knitting lace and the designer is Amanda Jones and the yarn that I used is Cascade Heritage color number 5686 I think it has an actual name maybe if I find the actual like name of the color then I'll put it on screen anyways uh, I think this is quite a popular sock yarn but if I'm honest it's my least favorite that I've used so far it has I mean I've never worn these socks and they're already kind of pilling and it's quite fluffy and like I'm pulling fibers off. It just, it has like no structure to it. And it just doesn't seem quite any, very resilient, which is too bad because I really love this sock design and I might do it again. However, note to anybody who wants to knit these, there is an errata in this pattern that I didn't notice until I was almost done my first sock. <laughs> but I did it correctly in the second sock. And you know what? You can hardly tell the difference, but it's in the cuff. There's a little bit of cabling in the cuff. Uh, if you go on the Len website, and maybe I'll link to the errata page, uh, there's just, you know, one of the symbols is like needs to be swapped with a different one. And uh, I ended up with, thing is now that they're washed and blocked, I almost can't even tell which one I did correctly. I think this is the correct one and this is the incorrect one. Can you tell the difference? You know, if you don't do the correction, you probably won't be able to tell because I'm looking at these and I can't really tell. <laughs> But basically like this little bit here is supposed to make kind of an X shape and with the mistake, it makes more of like a chevron, um, but it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, really, really pretty socks. And that is my last pair of completed socks. However, I do have a pair that I am working on now and it is not from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. It is from my brain. I am inventing these. <laughs> so. This is the second pair of socks that I'm making for my boyfriend. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm very jealous because uh, so far I love these. So again, I am using the, what I have left of the Manos de Uruguay sock yarn. So this is now being used in three pairs of socks and I'm only using it in the cuff, couple of rows, just to give it kind of that like gym sock look. And I'm um, using the the gray color for the heel and I will use it for the toe as well once I get to it. But I'm going to reinforce the toe, like doing that kind of reinforced stitching that you normally do on the heel, but I'm also gonna do on the toe because my boyfriend told me that his socks always wear out at the toe, at his big toe, which is interesting because I've thought about that too, because like a lot of these sock patterns have a reinforced heel, but my socks never really wear out there. My socks usually wear out at the bottom of the heel or at the ball of the foot. And then my boyfriend was saying that his socks usually will wear out at the tip of the toe. So I'm curious, where do your socks wear out normally? And can you just do that kind of reinforced stitching wherever you want on the sock? Because that's kind of what I'm doing. I did a reinforced heel turn, which I've also never really seen anyone do. Wait, no, that's not entirely true. This, um, the Avena socks, this part of the heel turn is also reinforced. So I lied, I didn't come up with it on my own. So yeah, I did a tubular cast on, which maybe you can see. I 
Did some uh, half twisted rib. And now the body of the sock is three by one ribbing. And that'll keep going for another couple of inches. And then I'm just gonna do reinforced toe, that, you know, trapeze shaped toe, whatever that's called. There's a name for it, I forget now. I've been talking for too long. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. <sighs> Anyways, I love this yarn. Oh yeah, the main body of the yarn, this is, hold on, I got my little, little tag here. Frosted leaves is the color and the company is the color of my fiber or la couleur de mes fibres. And this is a Quebec based yarn dyer. I found them on Etsy. I'm very interested in, in finding Canadian, especially Quebecois dyers, just because that's where I am. And it's just nice to support local. Um, and they have a lot of colors on their Etsy. I bought one other skein of their yarn. And so far, I'm really liking this. And I think it's such a good name for it because this yarn, like, if you untwist it a little bit, the fiber on the inside doesn't always catch the dye. So you end up with a very like three dimensional looking stitch. I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, frosted leaves, the frosted is like that little bit of white undyed bits that you get here and there. I feel like it's just like the perfect name for this yarn and such a gorgeous color. I'm so jealous of my boyfriend. <sighs> He's getting like the nicest colorway so far. Anyways, whatever. I better win girlfriend points after that. Oh my God, look at my crochet hook. Look what happened. <laughs> so I have this like little project bag that I've been using and I stuff it into my other bag when I like go to work because working on socks is so easy to transport. And honestly, that is the thing about sock knitting that I like over cross stitching. It's the, probably the only thing that I prefer about sock knitting is that I can bring it with me anywhere. Like with cross stitching, I don't really love bringing it around. Like I showed you my frame earlier. It's big. I don't want to bring it to a cafe with me. Like I don't want to work on it at my lunch break. I don't want to have like 20 different colors. Like I, I like stitching right here in this corner and I have brought it home with me and I've done stitching other places, but I'm always very relieved to be back home. But with sock knitting, it's so easy to transport. Anyways, but then you end up stuffing your crochet hook in your bag and <laughs> bending it like this. Anyways, it's still functional, who cares? And by the way, this project bag, it's super nice. It folds open like this, um, but then you can like close it up and you can fit quite a lot in here and it has this little strap. I really like it. It's called, well, the company is called Cottage Cloth. And again, they are, mm, no, I think they're in Toronto, but still Canadian. And actually I got a bigger bag too. And this is where it's basically exactly the same thing, just larger. And it has all of my, all my yarns in here that I haven't used yet. I had the idea that it would be super fun if every time I go to a new city, I find a yarn shop and I get a skein of sock yarn. And then I just like the socks that I make out of that yarn will be the, you know, the Toronto socks. So I mentioned that I went on this tour with my orchestra. It was a small tour. We just did three cities, my home city, and then we went to Toronto and then we went to Ottawa. So when we were in Toronto, I went to a yarn shop and I got this really cool skein of yarn. And there's a fun story about the shop that I went to. So the shop is called Yarns Untangled. And I decided to go to that yarn shop because I like kind of know the owner, sort of. Maybe, <laughs> I don't really know. So my mom is a violin teacher and like years and years and years ago, she had a student and that student's sister, I believe it's her older sister, owns a yarn shop in Toronto. And her older sister is also a musician. And like, maybe I met her when I was like eight years old. I'm not totally sure. I like vaguely am aware that my mom's old student had a sister. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's a little bit of a connection there. My mom maintained a relationship with that family. She, you know, there's a lot of families of students that she's had over the years that she still sees and catches up with. So that, that's one of those families and that's why I remember that. And when I had told my sister that I had started knitting socks, she was like, oh, you have to go to Yarns Untangled because that's where Amelia works. So when I went to the shop, 
I kind of, you know, timidly went to the, the lady who was working there that day and I was like, is there an Amelia who works here? <laughs> and she wasn't in that day, but I think she's the owner or the co-owner of the shop. Anyways, the, the woman who was working there wrote my name down so that she could tell Amelia that I stepped in, but I'm not totally sure Amelia knows who I am or remembers me. Cause if I'm honest, I like very vaguely remember her. I would have been like eight years old. Anyways, whatever. I figured if I'm going to a yarn shop in Toronto, I might as well go to the one that I have a vague connection to. So I went there and I was like, do you have like a local yarn? And she said that uh, for a local sock yarn, like something that would be, you know, unique to their store would be this particular colorway of Riverside Studio uh, sock yarn in their like super sock base, which is, it kind of reminds me of this sock, yeah, where it's like, less fluffy and it feels much more sturdy and round and i think i was looking online it said it's like eight ply or something yeah it's eight ply usually it's like three or four ply but yeah i totally see that it looks like there will be a lot more stitch definition with this and this is a exclusive colorway that they have called kensington which is the name of the neighborhood that they're in and these are the colors of the logo of the shop so that's really cool this is the only skein of yarn that I have that's like not a mostly solid color. Like I have some tonal hand dyed things like, you know, once again, eucalyptus, you can kind of see there's bits that are lighter and darker, but this is the only skein I have so far that's like really multiple colors. It's funky colors. I wouldn't necessarily have gone for it. However, it's really pretty. And I think this is gonna make a really cool pair of socks and they're gonna be my Toronto socks. And then, I went to Ottawa and I did the same thing. I found a shop. I don't have a personal connection to the stars. <laughs> I don't have a personal connection to the shop that I went to in Ottawa, but I found a shop that was, you know, walking distance from where I was staying called Wabi Sabi. And I walked in and was immediately greeted by a puppy. So that was incredible. <laughs> and when I was there, I got um, Malabrigo, I think it's called Ultimate Sock in the colorway wabi sabi and the shop that i went to is called wabi sabi so if that's not a match made in heaven then i don't know what is and this is i'm very lucky that it was a match made in heaven because i love this color this is the darkest yarn that i have so we'll see what knitting with that ends up being like but it's a really cool like blue green kind of reminds me of like seaweed like deep sea i don't know <laughs> I, I, this is gorgeous, gorgeous color and the puppy was very cute, but also very scared of me. Wanted to like come sniff me and then I wanted to say hi and then, and then she'd be like, woof, 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 and like kind of growl and run away. Anyways, she was only six months old, so <laughs> still being socialized. Um, also while I was in there, this couple came in with a little baby and they looked really confused. And then the dad was like, oh, I thought this was a sushi place. <laughs> And then uh, they were like, no, but there is a sushi place down the street. Whatever. <laughs> Wabi Sabi, yarn store, not a sushi place. And a very cute store. So now I have my two like little Carmen's on tour sock yarns. And you know, I mentioned in my last video that I'm gonna be going to the Netherlands in a couple of weeks now, like two and a half weeks. Oh my goodness, I have a lot of planning to do before then. Um, so yeah, anyways, when I'm there, hopefully I'll have the chance to visit some yarn stores as well. That'd be cool. Oh, also I forgot to mention when I was at Wabi Sabi, I also got some of this wool wash cause, cause I have decided that I'm gonna be hand washing all of my socks, even when it's super wash, I don't care. I, you know, the amount of hours that go into it, I'm gonna hand wash them just so they last a little bit longer. Um, and also a lot of the yarns that I'm buying are not necessarily super wash, so. You know, just to be safe, I'm gonna do them all with with this fancy little, you know, wool wash that I got at Wabi Sabi with a cute puppy. So I wanted to just briefly talk about knitting content on YouTube versus like the cross-stitching content, just like some observations that I've made. First of all, the very obvious one is that all the knitting videos are, they refer to them as podcasts and it just makes me wonder, why do cross-stitchers not call them cross-stitch podcasts? Who came up with the word floss tube? Like, where does that come from? <laughs> what, 
What, what makes something a tube rather than a podcast? A pod and a tube, what's the difference? I'm curious. I don't know, it's just something I noticed. I was like, well, is, 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 isn't, why is it not like a yarn tube <laughs> instead of a floss tube? It's a podcast, I don't know, whatever. It's just something I noticed. Also, the word skein. Hot take, is it skein or skein? Because I learned the word skein through floss tube and hearing people call it a skein, like a skein of, you know, a skein of floss. <laughs> but then, you know, I mentioned it, and my boyfriend was like, isn't it skein? And then my mom also was like referring to skeins of yarn. So I was like, oh, maybe it's skein? I don't know. But then I noticed like on floss tube, it seems like most people are saying skein. And then on knitting podcasts, it seems kind of like half and half. Some people say skein, a lot of people say skein though. So what do you say? Is there a proper way of saying it? I don't know. Something I really enjoy about those videos, and this is like maybe getting into like more of a me thing, but like I've watched so many like what I knit in 2023 videos. In fact, I, knit, I watched so many of those videos that YouTube started recommending what I knit in 2022 videos because I guess I'd watched all of the 2023 ones. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, noticed that in a lot of these videos, people are talking about the construction of their garments and what went wrong and how they fixed it. And for me, it has been very refreshing to hear people talk about garments and how they can fix them instead of talking about, well, my body is wrong for this garment. And, you know, I don't know, I just, I find that really refreshing to see that kind of positive attitude towards uh, making a garment work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, it's not because there's something wrong with you, it means there's something wrong with the garment. <laughs> so this is how we're gonna change the pattern to make it work. And I just, I think that's a really wonderful, positive attitude to have. And I've, I've just really appreciated hearing lots of different people talk about garments in that way instead of immediately reverting to criticizing themselves, which is just refreshing for me. There's also a big emphasis on accessibility and sustainability that I've noticed seems to be a through line through so many of these different podcasts. And I just think that's like really positive and forward thinking. And I don't know, it's, it's, I've really enjoyed watching these knitting podcasts or these yarn tubes <laughs> as I would like to call them. Anyway, I it's a little bit uh, of a different crowd, but also there's so much similarity with floss tube. And yeah, I just I'm I'm just having a, a jolly old time watching people talk about all the cardigans that they're knitting, even though I have no intention of knitting anything other than socks right now. <laughs> I also wanted to make a call out for tweed yarn. I'm very much interested in knitting socks in tweed yarn. I think it looks super cool, um, but I'm having a hard time finding some in Canada because I, there are places in the United States I can get it, but the shipping is like, sometimes it's the cost of a skein of yarn. So if there's anyone in Canada who knows where I can find some tweed yarn, whether it's hand dyed or not, Please, please do let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm on the hunt and I haven't had a lot of success yet. So that would be very much appreciated if anyone happens to know off of the top of their head where I can get some tweed yarn somewhere in Canada. <laughs> and the last thing that I wanted to mention, and I saved it to the very end because I feel like it's like the perfect link between the cross stitching and the sock knitting is that there is a sampler that has recently been released by, of course, Jakob de Graaf of Modern Folk Embroidery called Hold On To Your Socks. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll link it below, but it's basically like a sock pattern sampler where there's like designs on it of <laughs> color work socks. Anyways, super cool. I didn't know that existed at all, but it definitely feels very meant to be because I really like stitching and I am now knitting socks and it feels like the perfect marriage of those two things in my life right now. So I've never knit color work, but I would love, and I actually made like a little digital mock-up that I'll put on screen, but I'd love to knit some socks 
with something from that sampler. So instead of stitching it as a cross stitch piece, actually make some socks with some of those designs. I just need to like know how to do color work because I that's a new thing. I don't I don't know how to do that. So we'll see. <laughs> it's just an idea. Has anyone else ever done this? Are there other sock samplers out there? I'm so interested in this. <laughs> And with that, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. This has been uh, probably a very long video. I'm seeing that this particular clip has just reached an hour, but I did take that break in the middle. So ugh. anyways, we'll see how long or short this is. If you watched everything, all the cross stitching and the sock knitting stuff, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> I need to stop talking. I'm recovering from a cold right now and I'm like losing my voice. I really hope that there wasn't too much sniffing and coughing. I'm hoping that I'm able to cut most of that out, but if there was, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. Thank you so much for watching. I know this maybe had like a slightly different energy than some of my other videos. It was my grandma and then I talked about socks for an hour. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I'm I'm very happy to be here. I'm really grateful for all of the people that have, you know, subscribed and watched my videos and especially like all the comments that I've gotten. And I'm, I'm really, I'm going to try to do a better job of like answering everyone in a timely manner, but I do get a little overwhelmed sometimes, but it's, it's all good. Um, as for my next video, it's probably going to be after I get back from the Netherlands. I'm thinking that I probably won't have the chance to do it until April. So right now it's kind of looking like I'm posting a video once a month, which I think is, I think is plenty for me and my schedule and my rate of stitching and knitting. I think, <laughs> I think, I think once a month is going to kind of be the, the rhythm that I end up falling into. So far that's kind of how it's been. Anyways, thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one. And you know, I bet you the weather's gonna be super nice next time. That's my prediction. Next floss tube is gonna be on a sunny day. Springtime, flowers, tulips. Okay, I'm losing my mind. I need to drink some water. Goodbye. <laughs>